My name is Paul. I'm a practicing real estate agent in the state of Virginia and I live near Lexington out in the rural area. My specialty is real property and homesteads and so on and I do a lot of thinking about what is the minimalist way that you can make a homestead because I know a lot of young people today like my sons they're really interested in just living the old style simple homesteading life close to land where their children can grow up and be near other animals and have plenty of place to play and be safe and everything. And it's very, very popular today. And it takes some time to build an old homestead because in Virginia, for example, there's a long history of it. Uh, a lot of people came here in the early days of this country and even the natives that were here before, they just had to live off the land and cut down some trees or move around or so on <clears throat> and figure out how to deal with the wildlife and and figure out the water situation and so on. So I have thought a lot about what would make the absolute minimalist way. Let's say you're a young person, you don't have much money, and you just say, I want to live on the land. I'm just going to make myself a homestead and maybe me and my wife or my husband or whatever. We want to build a little place together and we're going to start from the real, real basics. So <clears throat> Here's what I suggest. Okay, I'm a realtor. I see this all the time. There's lots of land in Virginia and again, the history of Virginia is full of homesteading and uh, that type of lifestyle. So, the situation is you get a piece of land. Let's say you have like, okay, 10 acres. That's a pretty big piece of land. But not all the land is going to be useful to you because sometimes it's steep and so on. So, if you had like 10 acres or we could even make it five acres, but let's say you get a pretty good piece of land and it has a little stream or something on it and that's the, the minimum, okay? And maybe it has a little bit of a clearing and nothing big, but you can get in there and so on. So how do you go from there? Well, you can bring in one of the easiest ways these days to buy one of a used camper, a little camper. It could be a 15 foot, 10 foot even. 20, maybe 20 foot, that's too pretty big. Park it there and get a water collection system going on and get the water because honestly you can live quite simply with very little water actually. You'll need to flush your toilet and you'll need to wash your dishes and you need to have some water filters so you can cook with it and drink it and so on. But basically if you, you can solve the water collection system pretty easily. <clears throat> The septic system, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, you have to deal with a little bit about where you're going to dispose of. Well, let's say you're, we're doing the very, very minimum. We're getting, we park a little, we got a little pop-up trailer there. It's got a couple of nice beds in it or whatever. Or maybe we got a little one of those camper trailers, the hard shell and whatever. You park it there and okay, honey, well, here we are. We got ourselves a, a homestead. Well, <clears throat> you'll want a few other things here. One is you might want to build another another shed because you're going to have some storage needs and maybe some firewood build another shed so that when you're gone or if you take your trailer somewhere else for a while or whatever it's a really good idea to have some kind of a, a, a spare shed storage area you can buy them cheaply now you can build them yourself you can make a really rustic type of shed for a while and put a roof on it a tin roof that you buy at a hardware store and you can make yourself another shed. So now you got your place to sleep and everything. Maybe you get your little trailer, you got your little cooking place, you got a propane tank, on your, and you got a little water supply going on, collection system, <clears throat> place to hang up your clothes for drying them and so on. And you have now you have like the septic thing to deal with. Okay, for a while you can use the woods, but after a while you just develop a little. Basically a little outhouse system like they used to use in the old days. So now yourself, you have, you have a place to live. Basically, it's pretty simple. So there's a few other things that you're going to really need. You're going to want to end up clearing a little bit of land. And there's sometimes if you get a wooded area, you want to have make sure there's a drive-in. But this is the way people used to do it in the old days. Back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, you buy an old piece of land way on the country. And you don't, nobody zones you or cares about what you're doing there. The town doesn't care. You just park your little trailer there. Or you go out there with your camp, tent or whatever in your family. And you camp by the lake. And that was a very strong tradition for many, many years. 
And there's a lot of these properties that are still out there these days. Little cabins in the woods and hunter's cabins and so on. But there's not as many because the population has grown. So now you can make your own. And what I'm suggesting to people is, in Virginia, it's very amenable to that exact kind of life. To make a really minimalist, you just get your start somewhere. Because I'm very sympathetic to that. I have young... I have children in their 30s and two sons. They really love the outdoor life. One wants to get into organic farming. And this is a great place to do it. And it's the old tradition of pioneering ways. Just get yourself a piece of land and you get a place to sleep. You get a place to go to the bathroom. You get some water. You get some heat. You cut down some firewood. You build yourself a shed. You have a little homestead going on there. It's the way a lot of people still live today. If you go to India or Thailand, they'll have a, one other thing is a beautiful thing to do is to make a special cookhouse. A cooking area, a kitchen is a utility area. It doesn't have to be, in some areas of Thailand, for example, they, they don't have the kitchen in the house where you sleep. You see, the kitchen is a building, it's industrial, you go there and multiple people can use it any time of day or night. It's just there, you go in there and you got the water and everything and the big old pans and all hanging up. But when you go back to your sleeping place, it's all different. You see, so there's a lot of ways to approach this. When you have a little homestead, if you have a little basic trailer, I really urge people, I've had a camper trailer that's a pop-up. Frankly, with a... The way you get power for a really simple homestead is you just get one of those deep cycle batteries that was used for a marine battery or something. They're a little bit larger, they cost a little more, and they hold the charge for a really long time. And you get some Christmas lights, the white Christmas lights that are quite bright, they use hardly any power. You set that up with an inverter and you have yourself a place to sleep. You got a trailer, you got a little cooking stove maybe. In the trailer, you got your lights, you got, uh, you can get a solar charger if you want, and you can charge the battery off your car if you want, and now you have a little place to go to the bathroom, and you get yourself a little shed, and now you can put a little equipment there, maybe a lock on there, and so on, so you get yourself a little homestead very inexpensively. In the old days, that's what people had to do. In the modern area, I'm very... Very sympathetic to young buyers who come out and they try to buy a home and they go, wow, man, $200,000. Oh, my God, honey, do you think we could do it? Do you think it would be at your job long enough? And what's the bank going to say if we want to borrow $150,000? It's a very difficult and serious situation. So what I'm suggesting is to people look at the alternative ways of living and the really basic ways of getting a homestead, the very minimalistic way. A very young couple, my son, for example, and his young wife years ago, they didn't have any kids. They just could they could go camping, traveling. They can do whatever they want. They were not really tall and big people, so camping was very easy for them, and they loved it. So you can get your way into a homesteading situation. If you, if you get a piece of land and you start homesteading there, and you, let's say you use it as a vacation place for a while. And little by little you upgrade it, you put the shed there, you build a fire pit. Maybe you harvest a couple of trees, you make a garden, you make a hutch for the bunnies or whatever. You make some fencing for your dog. And next thing you know you have a little place there. And then you can transition from maybe your city life that you might be living in. And put some money over toward uh, a place to live in the future to grow your family. Now... I get a lot of calls from people who are looking for homesteads and if you build one, there's a trend now. People are moving out of the city. So if you come out in the country when you're young and you build a lovely homestead with all the amenities of raising family and so on, it's going to be in demand. There's a, a growing demand for homes that are relatively simple but around nature and privacy and these days you can get internet almost anywhere so that's not an issue. So. It's a wonderful thing to do to build a homestead, and I'm just trying to suggest with my little list here, just a really simple way of getting into it. Get a piece of land. I saw a piece of land go for $15,000 one time, two, two acres. <clears throat> it was honestly not the great place for homesteading, but I actually sold one for $30,000 that had only one acre, but it was near a big, uh, basically, basically a pasture, very private. 
and it had a well and a septic and electric already there on the premises. And now you can just park something there and you're gold. You got a septic already there. That's expensive. So if you find a mobile home on its own land, I, I made an example on one of my other videos about how to look for something like that. But that's another very wonderful option if you can find a mobile home on its own beautiful piece of land. It's all set up as a homestead. <coughs> If there's enough land there, you can build another home there, or you can get rid of the mobile home and put a, build a home right there and use the same septic and well and so on. So here I was suggesting the simplest way to get into a homestead is just to build a little structure there, maybe build a little trailer, bring a trailer there rather, and and make a little outhouse situation so that's all taken care of in a neat way and make a little shed there so you have a little infrastructure and so on maybe a little fencing and so on for your dog or whatever and that's a really great way to get into building a homestead that will as I said in Virginia particularly it's in demand there's a growing need for it and if you come out here and build a homestead in Virginia and little by little accumulates value and expands and becomes more beautiful then someday in the future you'll have that offer if you need to to pass it on to your family or you can sell it if you need to but a wonderful thing to do to pass down to younger children my grandchildren's age build a beautiful homestead where they grew up and then when they get older and take over your job and you're there maybe they can build you a nice little place on their property and say thanks mom and dad uh, for the homestead and uh, you can live on this other piece of the property here so I appreciate people liking and sharing ask me questions I'm a scout I'm a licensed professional in the state of Virginia and I hope to see you in some of my other videos and thanks again for listening